Welcome to Electron Online, and in this video we're going to show you how to calculate the torque on a current loop. Now in the previous video we showed you the forces on the four sides of the, of the current loop and you could see that the net force was equal to zero, but the net torque is not going to be equal to zero. Now notice here that we have simulated that very same angle, so what we're doing now is we're looking at the current loop from the side like that, and so you can see this part of the loop and that would be this part right here where the current is going into the board that would do for this section right there and you can see that that section is angled above the plane by an angle theta so let's call this angle theta right there and so what is the torque caused by F1 now one of the ways in which we can calculate torque is that the torque is equal to R cross F R would be the vector from the point of rotation to where the force is acting and F would be the magnitude of the force and then of course if you want to calculate the magnitude of that that would be the torque is equal to R times F times the angle between them it would be the sine of the angle between them because that's how we calculate the magnitude of a cross product and then you can see if you take R times the sine of theta so R times that would be the opposite side which is equal to the perpendicular distance from the point of rotation to the line of action of the force. So another way of saying what the torque is equal to, you can say that the torque is equal to the force times the perpendicular distance from the point of rotation to the line of action right there. And so you can see here that these are right angles and that's the same D perpendicular is the same as R times the sine of theta, which is the result of taking R cross the force. That would be the torque. Now, the force, what we discovered here was I A B. So let's put that in here. So the torque is equal to I times A times B times the perpendicular distance, which is this distance right there, which would be R times the sine of theta. Now what is r equal to? Well r is this distance right here which is half this distance which would be half of b. So we can go ahead and replace r by b over 2 and so we have the torque is equal to i times a times b times little b over 2 times the sine of theta. That would be the torque on this part of the wire. Now notice we have a similar torque on the other side. That would be caused by F2. F2, so F1 will try to rotate the whole thing over this way in clockwise direction. F2 will also try to rotate everything in a clockwise direction. Notice that the perpendicular distance is the same, the magnitude of the force is the same for F2, so that means that the total torque caused by this and this would be equal to twice the torque on one of the sides only. So torque total in this direction would be equal to two times the torque that we calculated right here and so therefore it is equal to two times and that would be I times A times the magnetic field times the side B divided by two times the sine of theta. All right now notice that what is A times B equal to? I'm talking about small a times small b and also realize that this two will cancel out that two and this little a times this little b coming back to the loop notice that a was the length of the loop in this direction and b was the length of the loop in this direction so a times b is simply the area of the loop so we can say that the total torque the total torque is equal to uh, the current through the loop a times b would be the area the cross sectional area of the loop b would be the magnetic field strength times the sine of theta and that would be the total torque and I said well wait a minute you forgot the other two forces well let's take a look here notice that the other two forces are acting in this direction they will not enable the loop to turn around at all like this the same with this force like that would not add anything to the loop notice that the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the point of rotation can never be bridged but in other words there is no such thing as a, uh, a a line that goes from the point of rotation to the force and so therefore we don't have a torque caused by those two forces so that is indeed the total torque. Also notice that the total torque is simply a function of how much current flows through the loop. The cross-section area of the loop which would imply that it really doesn't matter what the shape of the loop is and that's indeed the case and in the later video I will actually show you how to calculate the, uh, the torque of a non-traditional loop like a rectangular loop like this times the B field and then the sine of theta and the only variable 
on this whole equation is the sine of theta. Notice that the torque will always change depending upon the orientation of the loop. Notice when the angle theta goes to zero, the sine of zero is of course zero, then there's zero torque, then there's no tendency to make the, the loop turn around. And the maximum torque will be reached when the loop is turned this way because then the angle is 90 degrees and sine of 90 is one, that's when you'll have the maximum torque, the maximum ability to rotate the loop around. So that's all interesting to note and we'll show you that in a more illustrative form in a future video here. But at least here you can see that we've calculated the total force on the loop which is zero and now we've calculated the total torque on the loop. The only two sides of the loop that apply, that give torque to the, the loop is these two sides right here they're equal in magnitude on the forces opposite direction, but they both cause a torque in the same direction. Notice that this force will cause the loop to turn this way. This force will cause the, learn to, to the loop to turn that way. So they're actually additive when it comes to torque and they cancel each other out when it comes to calculating the total force. That's how we do that.